Hi everyone, I'm Jane and that is Mr. Moon. Say hello. No, you're just gonna purr, okay. And today we're gonna paint this old red door. You had your chance. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. Okay, today's canvas is a brand new 12 by 16, and I did add a layer of gesso to it, and then I allowed a little bit of my brush stroke lines to show. So the texture isn't very heavy, but it's enough that it should catch a little bit of the color and just give us a bit of variation in the texture of the stone. Now I'm gonna start by sketching on my door, and I'm just using a regular pencil. And since I'm using a lot of gray tone paint, I'm not worried that the pencil marks will show or affect the paint colors. Now today I couldn't find my ruler, so I'm gonna use a canvas board to help me get straight lines on my canvas. So I'm just gonna decide where I want my door to be. I know I want it to be pretty close to the top, maybe, maybe about an inch from the top. Actually, let's come down about an inch and a half from the top because I need room for the little archway that's around the door. So I'm just gonna lightly draw a line. Then I want the bottom of my door to be about two and a half inches or so, three inches from the bottom. I'm just gonna line that up, make sure it's relatively straight. And then the edges, probably I'm gonna go in about three inches from the edge of the canvas. And it can be a little different on each side. It doesn't have to be smack dab in the center. We'll just check that. And I think I need to bring this side in just a little farther. Felt like that was just a bit too wide. And I think I'll bring this side in just a tiny bit more. Since I'm gonna be painting over all of this and it won't show, it doesn't really matter. I can sketch on this for as long as I need to. And I think I'm happy with that. Now if I had my ruler, this part would be easier, but I'm gonna find about the center of this shape. That's roughly the center. And I'm gonna come from here down at an angle until I get to this line, maybe just before it. And then I'll start arcing it so that it meets up with that line at a nice curve. And the same thing on this side, make sure that they are as close to the same angle as possible. And I think that's way off center, isn't it? It's a little off center. And once we start painting it and we can make adjustments, so it's not really a huge deal right now. I feel like that's better. Now I'm gonna take a little line about a half an inch up from that center point. And I'm gonna make the exact same shape again. I'm gonna always make sure that this line is roughly a half an inch from this line, all the way around the edge of the door. Following that shape as exactly as I possibly can. I'm not worried about that line. So I'm gonna bring this part down just a little bit more. I'm gonna put a bit of an angle in here. Say that the door is recessed a bit. And then our wall will come off of here, not off of the door. A lot of this we may end up not even seeing once we're completed 
once we're finished with the painting, but just in case, I wanna make sure that it's about right. Okay, now we can start painting this in. I'm gonna start by painting in my door and I'm gonna give it an underpainting of cerulean blue. And the reason for that is because I feel like it's a nice color to kind of contrast with the reds and a little bit of it may show through with the texture. And I thought that that would look really fun to have little bits of blue poking out to say that maybe the door used to be painted blue. But if you don't wanna use this color, you can use any color you like for the underpainting or you can skip it altogether if you prefer. I'm gonna use my half inch flat, wet it in my jar and wipe it on the edge. I'm gonna load up with quite a bit of my blue, kind of pulling it out and squishing my brush that loads all of the paint inside of the bristles, not just on the outside. And then I'm gonna use the edge of my brush to cut around these edges and then just fill in the whole door, not, not this outer trim part though. Cerulean blue used to be one of my favorite colors. I used to paint with this color constantly, and now I never use it. Once in a great while, but I don't use it a lot anymore. I felt like ultramarine and phthalo blue would have just been way too vibrant, too dark to do this, but the cerulean is, you know, it's a little on the lighter side. It's not a terribly vibrant blue, and it worked so well with the reds that I'm gonna layer, that I'm gonna layer over top of it. But I think if you have um, cobalt blue, cobalt might work really nicely too. You really don't have to be too terribly worried about the edges here because we're gonna add quite a few layers to both the door and the stone. So if you go outside of it or you decide at another time that you want to adjust the size of the door or you, know, you wanna cover up something, you can do that. So you know, just get it as well as you can, as precise as you can, and then don't worry about the rest of it. I'm really just trying to make sure that I'm covering all of the white spots there where I know I want the blue to be. Okay, I cleaned off my half inch flat and I've got some black and unbleached titanium. You could just use white if you like. I will be using some white later, but I like the unbleached titanium when I'm doing stone because it helps kind of warm up the gray color. So it's not such, you know, just like a flat black and white. And then I also have some matte medium. Now the matte medium is gonna help the paint flow a little nicer on the gessoed surface. But since we're gonna do some layers, we don't wanna just obliterate the last layer with another layer. So I'm gonna be using matte medium to thin some layers down so they're almost transparent. It's gonna give a lot of depth to our stone. So I'm gonna pull out some unbleached titanium, mix it with some black. I'm just gonna get a gray color. It doesn't really matter what color of gray. And whenever I go back for more, my mixture is gonna be a little different. I picked up some matte medium and just mixed it in there. And I'm gonna start with the outside and just kind of back and forth. I'm not gonna do straight up and down because stone doesn't you know, typically do that. I'm just working in small brush strokes, just worrying about really covering the white of the canvas right now. That's really about it. 
Sometimes my paint will be a little bit lighter, sometimes a little bit darker. Don't worry about getting a real, you know, smooth blend. Let's not worry about the interior piece just yet. I'm just gonna get the outside painted in first. So I know this might be another one of those paintings where you know you you think that might be a little bit above my my abilities right now but again just like I said in the last couple of videos you know it's it's all just layers we do layers all of the time and sometimes you know if you just spend a little bit more time and attention on your layers you can achieve looks that you can't by just you know slapping down a color adding a highlight and a shadow and moving on. And so that's really all we're doing. There's no techniques in this painting that we haven't done, you know, on a larger scale or maybe a smaller scale, just different. We're just using them a little bit more often, spending a little extra time. See, those colors are quite different. I'm just dusting it over it. I don't care if it blends doesn't matter if that first layer is dry or not. The gesso can be very, very drying. And so again, that's why I'm using the matte medium because it really helps imp improve the flow of the paint. Without it, you know, I might end up using more water and then my paint would get really transparent and it just, it doesn't actually flow as nicely with just water as it does with matte medium. I don't think anyway. And again, remember to get a nice crisp edge. You don't wanna draw your edge like this line here. You don't wanna cut around it like this because as I push harder, see my brush gets whiter and I can lose control of my line. Also, can you see that little ball of paint that's getting pushed to that edge? So you don't wanna do it like that. Let me just get rid of that little ball of paint. You want to use the tip of the brush because it doesn't matter how much I push, it's not gonna get any longer. It's not gonna extend over that line. And I don't get that ball of paint right there on the edge. Once you've drawn your line, you can definitely go behind it and go flat. But just use the tip of the brush to get that line on there in the first place and then deal with it. Okay, let's fill in the inner edge. Now, this edge I know is gonna be darker because it's in shadow, and this edge is gonna be taking the light. So I'm gonna mix up a darker color for the arch on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter how dark it is. I just wanna make sure that this side is darker than this side, so I have a place to start. So I'm gonna put my brush right there on that edge and I think I'm gonna end up making this arch just a little bit wider. I like the width of my brush. I'm just gonna bring that straight down. Making sure I get right up to the edge of that blue. I don't wanna leave any white specks between it. But again, if it goes into the blue a little bit, it's not a big deal. I'd rather go into the blue a bit than leave white spots that I have to deal with later. Thank you. 
And on the other side, I'm just gonna pull some more of my unbleached into it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, let's fill in the ground here with a nice dark color. So I'm just gonna pick up more black, or matte medium, nice dark gray. And I'm just gonna fill this in. Okay, there's the underpainting for everything. Now I wanna let this dry completely so that we can come back and we can start layering on it. Okay, this is dry now, so we can start kind of building the colors and the textures in the stone. So I've put out a little bit of titanium white and I still have my unbleached my black. Now I'm gonna be relying heavily on matte medium here because without it, I'm either gonna undermine my paint by adding too much water, in which case the next layer will lift off the previous layer, or the paint will be too opaque and just cover this. And I wanna make sure that each layer still shows through just a little bit. So I am gonna go with, let's go with kind of a grayish color, mostly unbleached, but see there's a bit of that black in there still. A good amount of matte medium, see how much I picked up? And I'm just gonna mix it in there. I'm just gonna start somewhere. Now what I'm gonna do is be very precise in how I apply this. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put a good amount of pressure down just to lay down that little blob of paint. And then with very short, see that? Maybe half an inch brush strokes. I'm just gonna start working it out. Breaking up any lines where I don't want them and letting that color just kind of naturally taper off. If I feel like it's too opaque or I'm having a hard time getting it to spread the way I want it to, I'll just grab a little point of matte medium and that kind of pulls that color out, thins it out, makes it a little bit more transparent. And then if I decide I need more paint, I can just put a little heavier pressure, get that blop off of the other side and do the same thing. And now I can start kind of refining the shape of this arch. Let's get a little bit more paint. I just pulled more unbleached in, so the color's gonna be a little different than last time. Quite a bit of matte medium, so the color's a little transparent. Lay down a blob and just kind of lightly streak it out. See how you can still see that dark color through this color. Break up that line, I don't want any hard lines in here. Except, you know, except where the face changes angle. Now I feel like that's all pretty close to the same color, so I'm gonna break it up by just pulling a little bit of titanium white into that mixture on my brush. Quite a bit of matte medium, so this color is very transparent. You know, it doesn't look transparent there because it's quite heavy. And take it up into there, and with that light pressure, because this is all still kind of wet from that matte medium, just streak it in. This is not a difficult technique. I think the most important thing is the matte medium because that's gonna give you the transparency that's gonna make this 
easy to do and worthwhile. But aside from that, I think the most important thing is gonna be patience. This paint is quite dry. So I really didn't pick up a ton, but a lot of matte medium, and it's gonna be quite transparent. So I think that even a brand new painter could do this. I think if you're brand new to painting, you can do this. There's no reason you have to paint, you know, single, single color things, you know, very, very, very simple. If you think you've got the patience to work on layers like this, then you can absolutely do this painting. I'm gonna pull in a little bit more black there, just darken this color a bit as we move down. But again, see how transparent it is from that matte medium. Pull that up, see my pressure? My brush isn't really bending, I'm not doing flat. The only time I apply full pressure on my brush is when I decide that I need a little bit more of the paint that's on it but for the blending, it's just the tip of the brush. Right here I want more, so I'm gonna apply that full pressure. Get that bit of paint off of my brush, right back to my light, short brush strokes. I think up in this corner, I'm gonna go quite a bit lighter. So I'm gonna pull some white. Maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium just to keep it on the warmer side. Quite a bit of matte medium. Flat pressure, lay down that blob of paint, and then kind of pull that out as far as it'll go. See how it's not really transparent there and I can see my brush strokes really quite a, quite a bit? That's when I know I need to grab just a little more matte medium and that helps kind of smoke it out a bit. And don't sweat it. If you get a layer that you don't like, if you're like, oh, that's too light, too dark, too streaky, too whatever, don't worry about it. Just let it be for now. Don't try to correct it because you can put another layer over it later. And when you put that other layer over it, it might be exactly the look you were going for. I'm just gonna pull that over here just a little bit. Get rid of that line. I have still quite a bit of paint on my brush. All I'm picking up now is matte medium. Heavy pressure to get some of that paint off. As we go along, you'll see me doing that, picking up no paint, just picking up matte medium from time to time. See, still just picking up matte medium. And see how, that, how far that color is going. Let's change that color up a bit. I'm gonna throw a little bit more of this gray color, get some of that paint off my brush. Matte medium. All right, it's starting to get there. Let's get a little bit more white. I picked up a bit of a heavier amount of paint this time. Still putting the matte medium in there, but because I picked up a little bit more paint, it's gonna be a little bit more opaque than before. See, but you can still see the hint of the darkness under it. So I'm lay that down. I'm using the heavy pressure because I'm trying to lay down a good amount of this paint in this corner, then matte medium to streak it out.
don't be too overly worried about these. I am trying to clean up the line because in some places my line got a little out of control. But if it happens to go into it, that's fine because this is just the underpainting. So you can make adjustments still. And sometimes it might be easier to just let yourself go into that color rather than worrying about it and trying to cut around it and getting this weird line on the wall over here. I just put a little bit of black into that mixture. I grab a little bit of unbleached just to warm it up a bit. And some medium to smooth it out. I'm gonna get a little bit more black, mix it in with my medium. I really like it to be quite dark at the bottom here. So I'm just gonna pull some of that color up, up the wall a bit. And then a bit of medium to just get rid of brush stroke lines. Now at some point when you're layering the medium on top of the medium on top of the medium, it can start to get really thick. And since the medium makes the paint dry slower, if you start to notice paint lifting, then you just need to stop and let it dry before you add any more. And I feel like if I add another layer on this side now, that's gonna happen. This side only has the one layer and it's pretty much dry. So I think I'm gonna go work on this side now. I'm gonna get just unbleached titanium and notice at no point during this wall have I washed my brush off. So when I'm just picking up unbleached titanium, see it's still got some of that gray in there. I want to warm this up, particularly over here. So I applied a good amount of pressure, but that color that I laid on there heavily was very transparent. So I'm not worried that I lost anything under it. All right, I really wanna start working on the lightness. I want this stone to be a very light colored stone. So I'm gonna let this dry for maybe about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll start really kind of popping the color and the brightness on this stone. Okay, this is pretty much dry. So we're gonna really work on the light color. So I'm not gonna use any black for the most part. I may throw a hint of gray in here, here and there. So I'm getting a good amount of my unbleached titanium and some matte medium, just kind of loosely mixing them together and throw some of that over here. Might be a little bit more transparent than I want. Meh, we'll just go with it and see what happens. Now on the outside of this wall and this whole area that I'm working in, I'm not really saying that any part of it is in light or shadow. So don't worry about light source here. Really what these different colors are indicating are just different, you know, mineral deposits in the rock. Rocks aren't typically just a solid color. There's little variations in it. 
And that's really what we're building here. The reason I wanted it darker toward the bottom is to say that maybe there's, you know, been some, some minerals absorbed up into the rocks from water or plants growing up against it, something. So you certainly don't have to make it dark at the bottom. You can make it dark at the top and light at the bottom if you like. That's just what I wanted to see. Now inside here, we are gonna work on both the color variations in the stone, but also on light source. So we're gonna do that part last. I'm gonna go into some white and matte medium and kind of pop this corner here. Using the heavy pressure to lay the paint down So see all these variations in color that we're getting now, where the white overlaps the unbleached. We've got one color variation and you can see the darker color through there. And then down here where I'm overlapping the darker color with the white, we're getting another look entirely. I think that that's why layers are so valuable and so fun to work with. It's really interesting to see what happens you know, when you layer one color over another color versus layering it over another color and just kind of building it and seeing how they all work together. Just matte medium there to dust this out. And if you get these hard lines, that your only real option is to keep putting the color in that area or taking your paint down into that area. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there and, you know, smear a line out. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. That is looking much closer to what I was wanting. Let's work on the other side for a bit. And I lied about the black. I am going to mix up just a very pale gray color and be super selective about where I put it. It's also very, very transparent. A little bit of a heavier layer of white up in that corner. Just laying down the blop and then light pressure to pull it out. It's almost opaque there. This is still kind of tacky, so I'm not picking up any matte medium because I don't feel like I need it. I'm just using the light pressure to kind of pull it over that warmer color. Okay, I'm fairly happy with how the wall is looking so far. Let's move on to the interior part that's kind of angled in toward the door. And I'm gonna to go to my number eight bright. I'm gonna get some matte medium 
And I think I'll start on the lighter side first. So I'm gonna start over here. And we've already kind of got our gray color going. Let's, let's get some unbleached. And maybe I'll mix it in with some white. Lots of matte medium. Let's keep it pretty transparent for now. See how transparent that is. I'm gonna clean up my edge pretty good right now. Just use the tip of my brush to come in and give a nice sharp edge. And in some areas, the colors may match from the outside to the inside, and that's okay. Don't try to make a different color in here just so you can tell the difference between the inner and the outer wall because it might not be the right color for the light source. So I'm just kind of spreading that along this outer edge and a little bit of matte medium to kind of smooth it. So you just very loosely kind of spreading it down. I'm not trying to blend or do anything in particular with it. Clean up that little bit that got poked into there. A little bit more medium to blend out those lines. taking it almost all the way to the inside. In fact, in some places, especially right here where the wall is perfectly straight up and down, I am gonna take that brighter color about all the way to the interior. Don't worry about going over your door, over the blue part. I have a little piece of my canvas still showing right there. There we go. Let's keep just a hint of our gray color on the interior. So I just pulled a bit of that into the unbleached, some matte medium, and really this color is going to exist. Now well, let's go a little darker than that. It's pretty much right here at the edge that's going to push it deep into this area. So just kind of scratch it on there. Little matte medium. Kind of smooth them together. And it's a very loose smooth. I'm not, I'm not worried about getting a perfect blend. That's why I'm working so fast. I'm not working so fast because I'm super awesome and I'm trying to make it look easy. I'm working fast because I feel like that gives me the look that I want there better. See, I took that dark color all the way to the edge here because if this scene is lit by the sun, and my picture the sun is kind of up here, kind of shining this way, it's not shining up underneath here. So we'll keep this part a little on the darker side. Take that darker color down the edge a bit. And we'll let it fade out right there where the wall starts to be up and down. All right, that's starting to look like what I'm going for. I'm just picking up some white. Again, I didn't clean off my brush. Mix some matte medium in there. And let's really start to pop this edge. That scraping sound you can hear, that's my hand on the canvas. It's not my brush. My brush is barely touching. So really, I've got my hand on my canvas and my brush is angled so that it just barely touches. And I control the pressure by how much my hand is on the canvas. That's why my hand is rubbing on the canvas. You know, rather than having it out like this and then having a little bit less control over my pressure. I'm just kind of going like that. And sometimes it touches the canvas and sometimes it doesn't. But I'm looking for texture like that, so that's exactly what I'm going for. A little bit more unbleached. 
just to keep some variation in the color. Let's go ahead and work on this side now. So opposite of what we did on this side, I am gonna use a dark color. So my black with my unbleached. Again, I didn't clean off my brush, so there's still some of that white in there. Nice dark color, some matte medium. And we're really gonna do about the same thing. Nice and dark up here. I am trying not to get it out onto the outer wall, but I can clean it up if I do. Get that edge nice and sharp. Let's go a bit darker for the interior. So I just pulled some black into that mixture that's on my brush. A little matte medium right in here and pull some of this darker color in. Now, just like our side that is taking the light has a little bit of shadow in it, I feel like our dark side would have a little bit of light in it. Maybe it's reflecting off of this surface. Maybe it's reflecting up off the ground. Maybe it's just ambient light. Either way, I'm just gonna pull a bit of unbleached titanium into the mixture on my brush. Just get a color a little bit lighter. Lots of matte medium but I'm also not gonna put this light color up here. So just like over here, how it's dark until it gets to here, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So really I'm only gonna put just a hint of this color along this edge. Let's take this highlight color that we used here and just create a little bit of a stronger shadow right up here at the top. In fact, I may go just a hint darker than that. Very transparent though. There we go. down the inner edge here. And we'll let it taper off right here where the door kind of swings around vertically. I make those decisions when I stand back to look at this. Up close I think, oh that looks good. And I stand back and I'm like, well that kind of looks flat. In fact, a tiny bit darker, still quite transparent, and even darker right here in the middle. All right, I feel like I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I may come back later and adjust it a bit. The last thing I'm gonna do before we move on is just make a super transparent version of that dark color. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of unbleached into it to lighten it, just a hint. At the very bottom of the door here, I don't want it quite that bright. So let's go ahead and work on painting in our door. All right, so I'm going back to my half inch and I've got some cadmium red medium and some quinacridone and a little bit more matte medium. Now the cadmium red medium and the quinacridone make the most gorgeous color when mixed together. 
just such a beautiful red. So I'm gonna mix those and I'm gonna keep it just a little bit closer on the side of the cadmium red. The quinacridone is also gonna make a nice shadow color for our red. And I'm just gonna start filling this in. I'm gonna get as close to the edge as I can. And I'm not really gonna micromanage how much of the blue is left. So I'm not worried about getting down into the texture and making sure none of that blue shows. For the most part, I'm gonna try and keep my brush strokes straight up and down. You know, when I go around the edge, I can't really do that, but when I'm filling in the interior, for the most part, straight up and down. Now, here's another reason I did the blue. If you can tell, when I spread the paint thinly, the reds, the blue showing through creates a little bit of a darker variation of the colors. And I like that, and that's gonna help it seem like maybe it's an old door with old paint on it. I just picked up the tiniest point of matte medium with that. Again, just to help with that variation in the transparency, so I get a little bit of variation in the color. I'm not worried about where my shadows are gonna go just yet. I'm just gonna kind of fill it in with these colors. Sometimes I'll pick up just a little bit more quinacridone, sometimes more of the cadmium red, sometimes no matte medium, sometimes just a little point. Okay, there's our first layer of color. Now I'm gonna get a bit of matte medium and just the cadmium red. And it's very loose, I didn't really mix them together. And again, straight up and down. I am adding just a hint of the quinacridone in on this side. That will help me start to build my shadows. Okay, there's the base layer for our door and you can see we have a lot of variation and that's due to the different transparencies of the paint. I didn't make sure that all of the blue was covered and then the slight difference in the mixtures that I did. Let's go ahead and start working on our shadow area now. So now I am still gonna pick up some of the cadmium but I'm gonna pick up more quinacridone. So with that base layer, I kept it closer to the cadmium red side but for the shadow area, I'm gonna put it a little closer to the quinacridone side. A Little bit of matte medium, not a ton. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna keep my shadow color mostly from the high point here, down this side, and it's gonna be at a bit of an angle as well. So I'll show you. So I'm gonna start up here at the top and lightly streak that down just until the paint stops. And that's all I'm gonna 
worry about doing. I'm not gonna try and get more and drag it down farther. The quinacridone is already quite transparent. So the reason I'm using the matte medium is just to make the paint smoother and so that it kind of blends into the previous color rather than kind of fizzling out and giving us that canvas texture. And I think I'll pull it out maybe about two inches into the door. It's still quite light pressure. I'm not trying to go over it and over it and over it and blend it in with the previous color. That previous color is still a little bit wet, so it's smoothing into it. So if I go over it too many times, then I'll start blending and then I'll just end up with a solid color and I don't want to do that. So it's really just kind of a streak and whatever happens, happens. All right, so this is quite thick and pretty wet still. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll really punch these shadows right here and give a little more definition to the edge of our door over here. Now, before we start working on the shadows on this side, I actually decided that this is a little wonky right here. So I'm just gonna bring the edge of this door up just a little on this side, and then we'll do our shadows. I'm gonna go into some quinacridone, and there's a little bit of that cadmium red in there. And then I'm gonna pull just a tiny speck of black. Can you see that? It's just like a little pinpoint right on the corner. And we'll start with that and see how that goes. And let's do it just a little bit more. I'd rather go too little black than too much and have to mix up a ton of paint. So just mix little tiny bits until you get a color. You can still see the quinacridone, but we want it definitely darker. And then I'm gonna mix it in with a bit of matte medium. Now this shadow, this dark shadow, is really only gonna exist along this edge I mean, I will put a little bit just around the, the very edge of the door where the door meets the wall on this side, but not a lot. I'm actually gonna mix more black in there. Just barely keep that quinacridone color. There we go, much better. So I'm just going from that edge and just kind of dragging it down until the paint stops. all the way to the bottom of the door. And then I'm gonna streak a little bit of it over. It doesn't have to go all the way across. And again, maybe it's not necessarily a shadow, maybe it's just kind of weathering, like I did on the wall over here. I'm gonna go just a hint darker right in here. Now I'm just gonna pick up matte medium, no additional paint, and just kind of break up this shadow a bit. Okay, I'm feeling like this is pretty good. Let's get a hint of that dark color. It's still, it's pretty thin, thinned out with the matte medium. And I'm gonna go around the edge here. So really just taking it on the edge, making sure to cover 
the brightest red right where it meets the wall and then I am just ever so lightly going to streak it down because I don't want a hard line there. lightest pressure possible to break up that line so I'm not spreading it all over the place and I'm not drawing a hard line it's just blending it out ever so slightly and then I'm gonna go one bit darker really just mixing some black in with whatever's on my brush and I'm going to go around the edge on this side. Make sure that it's nice and dark right up there. And again, very lightly, very gently pull that down. It's going to be the darkest bit of our shadow. Okay, now I want to let this door dry before we move on to the next part on it because I'm going to be drawing with a pencil on the door and I don't want to mess up the wet paint. So let's go ahead and work on the ground for a minute. Okay, so I have my unbleached, my titanium, and my black. I'm going to get a bit of matte medium. And I'm going to load up with black. And I think I'm going to just come in here and just kind of take a slash of white. So see, I've got the black and then a little ball of white on one side and nothing is really mixed. I'm gonna start drawing some paving stones here and we're just gonna do this really generally. We might end up losing some of it. And if you have a lot of red here like I do and you don't like that, you can always just kind of cover it up before, before we get started. So let's do that actually real quick. Okay, all we're gonna do is kind of, just kind of say where our paving stones are gonna be. And I want them to look like old slate, not very regular and square, but you could do it regular and square if you like. So I'm just gonna take the tip of my bright and come just about to the door. I'm not going all the way to the door. And just sketch out some kind of a shape and keep it kind of irregular shaped. And we'll have it come around the wall a bit there. And then I'll fill it in just with a color mixture that's going to show, that won't just blend into the ground. So it doesn't matter if you use all three of your colors or, or what. I just kind of picked up a little bit of all three. Don't worry about what this looks like right now, because you might end up painting over some of it in a minute, and we're going to add the details to it last. but I wanna know where it is before I do the next part. And let's do another one. And I think I wanna do just one more. I don't know, maybe I'll throw in another one. But I want one over here that's kinda of leading up to the door. Maybe I'll just do one little one over here. Maybe it's not even a paver stone. It's just a rock that's over here. And if I decide I don't like those, I'll cover them up later. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and we'll go work on the door. Okay, I turned my canvas sideways because I'm gonna start drawing some of those big wrought iron hinges on my door and they're kind of symmetrical and it's just easier for me to do it straight down than it is side to side. So I'm gonna start with my first one up here. Hopefully you'll be able to see this pencil. You can use chalk if you like. I'm gonna start right here and just kind of bring this straight down. If you need to use a ruler or something, that's perfectly fine. 
I'm gonna bring it down about three quarters of the way across the door. I'm trying to paint around a camera or draw around a camera. So I think my line is a little crooked. I can adjust it once I start painting it in. And I'm gonna do my next one right about, let's see, right about here. And I'm gonna bring it down the same distance. And you can do these hinges however you like. You can make them super fancy or very, very simple. Now I'm gonna take kind of a curly end. It's gonna come right from the edge of the door here and around and out about like that. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do as close to the same thing as I possibly can. If they're a little bit different, I think that that's okay. You know, they're ancient and they might've been handmade. They were probably handmade. So a little variation isn't too bad, I think. Let's do another little flurry bit right here. And we'll give it kind of a little split end there. Same thing over here, roughly, as close as I can get it. This one might be just a little bit smaller than the top one. I think they're close enough. Roughly in the same place as this. If you need to draw a line across, that's fine. Let's say that there's a keyhole here. So I'm just gonna draw kind of a, an oval. And right under it, maybe we'll give it a little hand pull. So just kind of a rectangle or whatever kind of a plate you want to do and a circle. I said a circle, not a weird egg. And I'm going to use my number three round brush and get some black paint. We're gonna start filling these in. Roll that to a nice sharp point. And my, my little hinges did end up being kind of slanted because I was trying to draw them around a camera. So I'm gonna just use that as a general, a general outline for them. So I'm gonna start here with very light pressure so I can get a nice thin line. And as I bring it back, I can start to apply heavier pressure. I think I'm gonna start out just with pretty standard pressure though, just to get the line on there. Take it all the way to the back. Don't go over onto the stone, stop it right at the edge of the door. And now I can kind of smooth out the line. Apply a little heavier pressure as I go to widen it out a bit. Let's do, let's do this little curly cue. Bring it around and up to the edge of the door. Bring it right back down and I wanna come up and smooth it into that. Same thing on this side. And I'm really not following my pencil lines too terribly much because they were just a little bit off. Swirl it around. To the edge of the door. And blend it in. You could also trace these on, you know, if you're not confident in drawing two that look the same, draw it on a piece of paper and then trace it. Trace them both on. Now 
then we'll do this little flurry bit here. It's just kind of a simple one. Oh, maybe I will blend it down. Yeah, I like that. And then our little split here. Not too bad. I think the hardest part is just getting them symmetrical in the first place. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this one. Let's go ahead and do our key plate and door pole. Okay, let's go ahead and start adding some highlights to it. So my brush is cleaned off, but I'm gonna load up with just a bit of black paint. I don't want a ton. I'm gonna roll some of it off. Just enough that I'm not picking up straight unbleached titanium. I'm just poking into it and getting a bit on the very tip of the brush. I'm gonna come to my little wrought iron pieces and just very lightly just kind of start dashing some on. See, I'm almost just scribbling, just with the very tip of my brush. Wipe a bit of that off, pick up a little of that black that I just laid back down, and I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of underneath it, and maybe up into it if I feel like it's too strong somewhere. That kind of blends the colors a bit and softens the unbleached. If it's still too bright, just pick up a little bit more black and I'm really just gonna kind of run it under, on the underside. Let's do that again. get it right up to that top edge and as we move over here into the darker side of the door I'm not gonna have as much I still want to have just the slightest hint of it but nowhere near as much let's go ahead and leave that part for now a little bit more black and kind of dust it Maybe I'll pick up just a little point of matte medium in there too. It's almost just like you're sketching with a pencil. That's how I'm using my brush. Just the very, very tip of it. See how over here, I'm kind of blending it in more. So you can tell that it's just a little bit of a lighter color than the pure black. So not a lot of reflection. So just sketch it, don't outline it, don't put these hard lines on there. Because a lot of times these wrought iron bits are like hammered and so they've got little divots all over them. They're not typically real smooth. And I'm just kind of blending that. And blending it out a little bit more as I move back. So 
same exact thing on this bottom one. All right, same thing on our key plate. Now the key plate and the door pole are on the side of the door that are taking the most light. So we're gonna add just a little bit more color to them. Just kind of slashing this unbleached on there. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit of matte medium, a little bit of black, very transparent before that dries to streak it just so I don't have a completely solid color here a little bit of variegation in the color. I think I'm gonna leave the right side over here black. So that'll be a nice shadow. And then maybe a little point of titanium white. We'll give it a little bit of a shine on this side. Gently pull that over. I'm just kind of touching my brush and almost just tapping it. Let's do that same thing on at least the top half of the key plate. Leave that left side, or the right side, I don't know my left and right, leave that side dark. A little matte medium, really thin black mixture. Give some depth to that color, a little bit of some differences. Maybe just a teeny point of white, the tiniest point of white I could get. And the actual pole itself. Same thing as over on the hinges, I'm just kind of lightly scrubbing in some of this unbleached titanium nice and bright up here as it comes down i'm going to bring the highlight to the inside of the pole now onto the the face and back around to this side so you know what i'm done i got my shadow in the wrong spot on the key plate and on the <laughs> the lock, I wasn't paying attention. We'll go fix that. Because if this is bright and this is dark, then that would mean that this would be bright on this side, just like this would be bright on this side, dark on this side. Because the light source is coming from over here, shining this way. All right, let's get a bit of a thin black mixture. Just kind of stamp over some of those lines. Again, it's just kind of that touch with a little bit of a pull. We can come in with our white. Again, the tiniest little point that you possibly can. And we'll just kind of pop a couple of highlights here and there on the parts that we feel like would be the brightest. And you can make up where that is. Let's fix up our key plate and the handle. 
And I'm gonna move my shadow over here. So this is just a thin black mixture. Move my shadow over here. Grab some unbleach, just kind of poke into it. And we'll cover up that shadow over here. That side got a little away from me. That's okay. We'll just take a slightly damp brush and just wipe away anything that went outside of where we want it. Easy. And then I feel like this underside, it needs a little bit of light to it, but I don't want to put a bright highlight on it because I feel like there would be quite a bit of a shadow being cast on it in here. So I'm just lightly dusting some of this unbleached black mixture. If you want to get super crazy, you could even add a little bit of a shadow on the door from the door handle. I hadn't planned on doing this. Let's try it out and see what happens. So mostly quinacridone, a little bit of the cadmium red, a little point of black, good amount of matte medium to make sure that it's nice and transparent. Very, very transparent. And I'm gonna say that the shadow kind of comes from here. Follow with my eye where I think it's coming from. Well, it's kind of weird shaped, isn't it? Well, matte medium to blur it. If it's a little more blurry, then you've got a little more room for error. All right, we'll let that dry and see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, I'm gonna go to my number one round. Nice and little, just get me some black and we're gonna make the keyhole. So just a little circle there. Bring it down a bit and widen it out at the bottom a little. Okay, I'm actually gonna pop the highlights toward this end of the hinges and then we'll move on to the ground and we'll be about done. Okay, now down here at the bottom, we're gonna add some little grasses and weeds and stuff. And I'm gonna use this stiff natural hair bristle brush. It's about a half inch wide and it's dry. I'm using it dry. Now I have ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium. And you can really use any blue or yellow that you like. I chose these because they're both warm colors. The ultramarine is a warm blue. The cadmium yellow is a very warm yellow. So mixed together, I'm not gonna get this bright, intense green like I would if I used, let's say, primary yellow and phthalo green. I would get a very shockingly bright green, and I didn't want that. This gives me a bright enough green. So I'm gonna start with quite a dark color 
for the base of the grasses. I'm just picking up some ultramarine blue, really just on the end of my brush. I'm gonna pull just a hint of yellow in there, just so it's green, but it's still quite on the blue side. Kind of stab my brush to break the bristles apart so I don't have like a little stripe that I'm adding to my canvas. Now I'm gonna try and work around my rocks. However, don't try to avoid them completely because then you're gonna see the ground around them. It's gonna look very stiff. So if you need to tap and go over top of your rocks a little bit, that's perfectly okay. Notice my brush is not bending. I'm just kind of poking at the canvas and that's it. Just one and done it. Don't sit there and stab over the same spot because it's just gonna get really puffy looking. And this is actually very, very similar to what we did last week in the monochromatic castle video. This is really how we did the grasses there. We're just using colors this time. I can even take a little bit of it over the bottom of the door. I feel like this door hasn't been used much lately, so there's probably some grasses growing up around it. See, I'm not worried about overlapping my rocks because we haven't finished the rocks yet. Let's even bring just a little bit of some grasses up the edge there, little bushes or something, whatever they are. You don't have to cover the entire ground if you don't want to. Leave some of that gray showing. Just bring a bit up the wall there. And I think I am gonna leave a little bit of my ground showing, probably right about here down in this corner. So I'm just gonna lighten my pressure and let that taper off. I don't want a hard line where it stops. want to let this grass dry because we're not going to finish the grass before we finish the rocks. If I start painting the rocks now I might drag some of that green in so it shouldn't take too long maybe five minutes and then we'll finish up our rocks. Okay I'm going back to my number eight bright and we're going to start working on the rocks. So I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to grab a little slash of white and maybe a little slash of unbleached. They're not mixed they're just kind of marbled on here. And then I'm gonna give my rocks very distinct edges. For the interior, I'm gonna kind of lay my brush flat and just streak it. Every time I pick up paint, it's gonna be a little bit of a different color a little bit of a different color mixture. See, so just kind of sketching that on there. Make sure that the edge of your rock is different enough from the color behind it so that it doesn't blend into it. Whether it's darker or lighter, just different is really all that matters. My paints are starting to dry out a bit. If you get too much of one color, just pick up a little more of another. All right, now I'm gonna get a bit of black, 
just a tiny hint of white, and we're gonna create some thickness to the rocks. So think about what parts are facing you and just come from the edge and pull it straight down just a little bit. It's just going to say that the rock has a bit of thickness to it. Change up your color if you like. And you can go through and add darker and lighter values in there. Whatever you want to see. Let's do that on our other rocks. I like to do the little flat kind of scooting technique because it gives the rock a bit of texture. It doesn't just make it, you know, smooth and blended, where if I use my brush flat like this, I get a much more smooth look. And I don't want that. I want it to look kind of you know, like rock, like slate or something. I'm not putting a ton of pressure. You know, if you mash your brush flat like that, then it's gonna blend it a little bit more. If that's what you want, that's fine. But if you just kinda want that subtle texture, then just use light pressure when you do that. This one doesn't have a lot of areas to thicken it up, but that one little spot, I think, does a good enough job of pushing it up a few inches off of the ground. Oh, I almost forgot this one. Back to my natural bristle brush. I did have to clean it so it's wet, so I'm just gonna dry it on a paper towel really good. And we're gonna do some details in the grass and we're about done. So I am gonna go a little bit brighter, a little bit more yellow to my color. And maybe I'll pick up my paint just a little bit heavier, just a bit heavier than before, still kind of stamping it so the bristles break apart. I'm gonna use the same type of pressure, not very heavy pressure, especially to start. See how I get little bursts of the color there? Cause I'm just barely touching to the canvas. I'm not terribly worried about it going over my rocks. These are wild overgrown grasses. Some of them might be going over the rocks. But I didn't wanna do the rocks and then do all of the grasses because then I felt like I would lose the rocks more than I wanted to. Take a bit of that up the wall. I'm not trying to cover all of that dark green. I'm gonna take some of it over the rock there. And there. If you do happen to get rid of too much of your dark color, you can just add it back in. Don't worry about that. some areas I may not put much if any of this color so I left that whole spot dark I'm 
Notice I'm always changing the direction of my brush as I tap it. Each time I tap it, I've rolled it to a different position because if I do it like this the whole way, everything's going to look the same. So just move your brush around so that it's always just a little bit different. And let's go lighter. Just pulling some yellow in and super light pressure. Barely touching. I don't want big yellow blobs. I just want some nice bright points on some of these. If you wanted to, you could even come through with a, with a color or even just white and add some little flowers growing in here. I played around with that idea while I was developing this, but ultimately I didn't like the way it looked on my painting, but I bet somebody out there could make it look awesome. So you should go for it if you get that idea. I'd like to see that. Make sure that you guys are following me on Instagram because I'm gonna start doing this thing. I'm gonna start this week with this painting. If you follow me on Instagram, the first person who paints this, posts it on Instagram and tags me in it. I'm gonna regram it and show everybody and of course you'll get credit. I'm not just stealing your photos. So if you wanna be an Instagram star, go follow me. Just search for painting with Jane, underscores between the words. You'll find me and we can have some fun on Instagram. I think it's looking just a little empty on this side over here. So I'm gonna go back to a slightly darker color. I'm just kinda pop a bit in there. Hey, I'm pretty happy with how that looks, so I think I'll sign it. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and kind of getting lost in the layers and seeing the way that each layer interacts with the previous one to help create the depth and the color differences that you can't really get from blending alone. Remember to find me on Instagram. You can just search for painting with Jane like this. And the first person to paint this painting and tag me in on Instagram, I'm gonna regram their photo and show it off to everybody. Unless of course you tell me you don't want me to, then I, I wouldn't. Thank you as always for painting with me everyone. And I'll see you next time.